defiant, tearful, and claiming she's not a killer. Now, the woman linked to the death of a local lotto winner, Abraham Shakespeare, is speaking out. The sheriff's department found Shakespeare's body at her boyfriend's house, buried under a concrete slab. How did Shakespeare die? Shot in the head, according to D.D. D. Moore. You don't ever believe I was trying to do that. Thank you. Like, you you don't that ask me for protect. You don't protect me. You, you won't do testing. You don't care if I'm killed. You don't care. You don't think Dee -dee. it's a big deal. You think Dee -dee. I've done this. You think Dee -dee. I took a gun and shot somebody. Dee -dee. Look at the bright side. If you can convince me, you can convince anybody. But you think I took a gun and shot Am this I right? man. If you can convince Hang me, on. you can convince anyone. So call Hello. Me I'm not yelling at you. I haven't, I haven't met you yet, okay, other than meeting you out in the parking lot. Okay, so let's not get off to a bad start, okay? <laughs> I think we got some things to talk about. Obviously, I've only been involved with the information and tailing this whole thing for right at five days now, okay? I don't have ten months of knowledge like Detective Wallace and Detective Clark. Okay, when you're talking about two agencies involved with each other, we have unlimited resources. We can find out and accomplish anything we want to do as a collective agency together. Okay? Now, I rely on them because this pretty much has been their investigation. Well, if I have lied to them because I've been scared of this man and they don't believe me, I asked for protection. Okay. They kept asking me. They knew I was keeping something from them. They knew I had kept hiding something. I'm not telling them everything because I am really scared. They don't believe me. I ask if they can give me protection, and I tell them. After last night, I didn't care. Okay. Once I found out that he really died, I didn't care. I'd rather be dead myself. I don't care. I want him in jail. All right. Time out. Time out. The man that you're supposedly scared of, who are we referring to? A guy's name is Ronald, and Ronald exists. He even threatened. He, uh, James Shakespeare, I talked to him. He threatened him, because James called me, because he got a threat from Ronald, too. He threatened him so bad that he went to the sheriff's department and filed a false report to say the man was still alive. I don't care if you're fit. If my sister, my sister, somebody killed her, I would not go file a false report and say I talked to her if I didn't. That is my sister. I'd rather be dead myself. All right. Let, let me just preface it this way, all right, Ms. Moore? Uh -huh. um, like I said, this has been five days of me catching up to the information that these detectives of Polk have accumulated. Mm -hmm. And they're jammed up, they know their business, they know exactly what they're doing, and they pretty much well, know everything. Now, hang, on, hang on a minute, okay? okay? Five days of catching up with this stuff. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of the interviews. Uh -huh. I saw your interview from Monday night. Okay, and I'm going to sit here right from the start and let you know I'm not going to sit here and listen to more twists and turns. Okay, we're not going to go down different roads and paths because I don't need to right now. Hang on, hear me out. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to sit here and listen to you. Okay, and I want I want to hear from you, but I want to preface it by telling you I'm not going to be led down the wrong path. I'm not going to be led astray because. I'm not going to spin my wheels and waste my time, and I'm not going to waste Polk County's time, because you know why? We don't need to. A lot of our questions have been answered now, and now it's time to lay everything out on the table and get to the bottom of it. Okay? And I have my opinion, along with Detective Wallace, and we're pretty much on the same page. I know. You think I shot the man? You think I took a gun? Did you hear the part that he said we're on the same page? Uh-huh. Keep listening to them. Okay. Uh, we're on the same page. Okay, so let's just get that clear. Okay. All right? Like so you I said, think I shot the man, too. I'm not telling you what I think right now because I don't lay out my cards like that. Okay. I'm willing to listen to you to a point. Okay? But when I'm done listening to some more charades, we're going to cut it off right there. Okay. All right? Let's not waste our time anymore. Let's not waste his time. Let's not waste my time. All right? Okay. Well, because then, as of right now, listen to me. As of right now. I have a homicide in my county, mm -hmm. and I have a body recovered, obviously, mm -hmm. and I have a pretty good idea of what happened. 
Now it's time to lay it out. Right now. I did not kill that man. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't then who did? a gun. I told him that is true. James <clears throat> James Shakespeare got Ronald come and seen him and scared him so bad that he went is that true? Did he file a false report? Did he say that he seen Abraham? He never went up to the sheriff's department. There's there been no report from anybody that he was alive. None. None. So he lied to me. Dee Dee. Enough of the okay, lies. Okay, okay. Then he lied to me. Okay. No, okay. no one's lied to you. In fact, let me give you a hint about James Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. I've been talking to him every day since this thing's been going on. And okay. I know that you've approached him about things. Okay. And you've offered to pay him money to tell stuff. Okay. 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 Look at me for a minute. Look at me for a minute. Okay. This is very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me tell you something. None of the little stories like he told you are going to fly anymore. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, what you need to start realizing, if you love your son like you love your son, like you tell me you do, okay, do. you need to make sure he has at least one parent left on the outside. He okay, does. listen James to me. Nothing. Listen to me. All right, it's time to start admitting what you did. Honestly, no more games about Ronald. No more. Get, listen. To, no, look at me. Look at me. No more. Don't say another word. Listen to me. No more games about Ronald. No more games about Shaky Sean. None of the stories, none of the convoluted mess, okay? I have a very good idea of what happened, okay? Okay, you tell me that. James Moore did dig that, that thing, okay? I know he did, all right? James Moore knows he did, okay? Mm -hmm. I just spent the afternoon with James Moore, okay? I just left with James Moore, mm -hmm. all right? We know what happened. Now, it's important for you to tell the truth. If you want R.J. to have his father out here with him, R. if you James want... R.J. didn't do anything. If you want R.J. He dug the hole. He dug the hole. And he showed us right where. He, he physically came over, Dee Dee, and stood to the right of that last oak tree behind that two-story house and did one of these. It was about right here. The scoop was pointing south. The bucket went in, and I pulled the dirt to the north. And that matches exactly with the dig that we had conducted. And we had and anthropologists I, out there, hang on a minute, that lined up the striations in the dirt and said, this is a one-scoop job right here. And I told Clark that they told me they did not put Abraham in that hole. Then how in the hell was he in the bottom of that hole? They lied to me. Ronald and them lied to me. The drug dealer lied to me. Dee -dee. I don't Dee -dee. care if you think Dee -dee. I did it. There Dee -dee. is no stop for a second. Okay. Well, then why don't you just arrest me? Dee -dee. If you think I did it, Dee -dee. Stop. arrest me and an innocent person is going to go to jail. Dee -dee. Stop You're... for what? a minute and listen to me. Okay. That hole, okay, it was dug in the afternoon of April 7th. Okay. okay. James came back two hours later. When you, he, he met you there, he dug the hole. Listen to me. Don't say another word. April 7th, he met you there. You called him over there, he dug the hole, okay? You, you were there alone. Nobody else was around. He called, you called him back at 552. I have all of the, of the phone records, you know this. Okay, I know exactly where you were at, I know where he was at, I know where everybody was at. At 552, you called him back. He came back over to the house. He filled the hole back in. You were the only one there, you were hot and sweaty. The hole where Abraham was found in yesterday. There were no other holes dug there. We've had anthropologists out there. The color of the soil changes. When you fill back in holes, they don't, the, the, one's light, one's dark. Okay, we have pictures. We have video. Listen to me. We have pictures. We have video. There's no doubt there was only one hole dug in that area. That's the hole where Abraham Shakespeare's body was found yesterday morning. Okay? Dee Dee, I don't hate you like you think I hate you. Okay? I'm telling you right now. I like you. I like your family. I like RJ. For the sake of your son, okay, you made a mistake. Something went very wrong, and we need to know the reasons why. And I'm telling you right now, for the sake of, if you love your son, if you value your son's rest of his life, it's very important by you having your husband involved whatsoever, like you did, by having your, son, your husband dig that hole and unknown to him, bury a body, okay, at your direction. You would put him right in the line of fire. You put him and I'm telling jeopardy. you, right now, he is it's not a, jeopardy. Without, yeah. without your complete honesty right now, there's a good chance that both you and James Moore will be going to prison for the rest of your lives. 
okay? It's important. It is important. The rest of the rest of your son's life, as long as you the rest of your son's life is in jeopardy for right now, for what you say. Now, okay, you have been selfish beyond selfish. Okay, you have done things that the average person would never even think of doing. All right, it's time now to stop thinking about Dee Dee Moore. It's time to start thinking about R.J. Moore. It's time to start thinking about James Moore. How can you arrest James when I know he can pass a polygraph and he did not have... Polygraphs. Polygraphs are not admissible. It doesn't matter. Polygraph is nothing. He knew... He... He... he Dee Dee, we spent no, about why two days, so you tell the truth. He did you not know. Then you tell this man the truth about why he didn't know, because you didn't I, let him know. I, and and let, no. let me preface this again before you say anything, okay? Mm -hmm. You you reinitiate. You contacted Detective Clark, and mm -hmm. you made it very clear to him that you wanted to talk to us. Mm -hmm. So that's leading me to believe that you want to make amends and make things right. And like but I said, you, hang on a minute. I don't want to be led down the wrong path. Okay, and be led astray from bull, uh, down, uh, down a path of bullshit. Okay? You came here willingly. You were out there in the front parking lot. You said you'd be here at 3. Okay, I even got here late. You were here, and I appreciate you coming in. Now it's time to make amends. And before you answer anything, we pretty much already have the proof and the forensic proof to discount anything. So if you start telling us another lie and lean us down some rabbit hole, we have the ability to counter it. That's our job. And you're going to have to prove to me what is the truth. And we can back that up with the forensics, because we're going to know if it's bull crap or not. I don't want to hear another concocted story. I don't have time for that. You have involved two counties in a major investigation. We're not going to spend time listening to some other rabbit hole story and be led astray. It's not going to happen. And you're, you're putting your 15-year-old child in jeopardy. And I say that with meaning already, because of the fact that you are potentially looking at both parents. I already told Clark that James did not know what that hole was that I really... And how could he not know? Because what I did was... You're, when, you're looking at a, a five- to six-foot hole. How could he not because know? Because I told him we were burying some concrete. We had buried concrete out there on the property before. If you look in front of that, uh, in front of that building, there's what concrete building? buried. There's concrete buried right in front of the brown building to the left. The one in the middle, the, like the little yeah, shack-looking thing that has some new stucco yeah, and paint. Yeah, that one. There's concrete buried right there in the property. On, on there's the property. no concrete buried where I the victim know. was found, where Abraham I, was found. I know that. I know that. What happened was, and I don't care what you say, as far as I know, I didn't pull that trigger, okay? I didn't well, explain to me this issue of this concrete issue. Okay. I, I'm interested concrete, in hearing that first. They wanted to, there was a couple towels that had, you know, got messed up. And what do you mean by messed up? Well, th because they told me they were going to go get Abraham help, and they put him in the car to, and told me they were going to take him off in the car and get Abraham help. I I went ahead and I called James over and had him dig the hole. What car? Um, a, a black car, and it was sitting over. If you're looking at the house, it was sitting over behind the house on the left hand side. In the there was orange trees. There's six orange trees here, out back of the red brick home. There's mm -hmm. a car here. There's the red brick home. Okay. Okay. So this is the red brick home, and there's the car. Um, I told him that I needed a hole dug because that's what the guy told me to do. So I had him dig a hole. The guy was inside. I went was out this there. day or night, morning, what? I mean, I don't know. Whenever I called James, I told him to dig a hole. Okay, I had James dig a hole, and he dug it. I went back inside, and I went into the blue room. And the two guys that were in the house told me they were going to take care of the stuff. And I said, okay. And what stuff the, are you the, referring to? Talking about they had some towels and stuff where they had <coughs> said that um, they had got blood on and stuff. And I said, okay. So I went back into the blue room because I was very upset. I 
couldn't handle what had happened. And um, they went over there and um, did what they did, and they said they were going to put dirt over it. So just tell him he, they buried concrete and stuff. So I put, they put some dirt over it and all. They put or you put? No, I didn't. Um, Why were you hot and sweaty when James came back? Like you'd been working? Because I had been crying. That's not sweaty. That's well. That's not I had sweaty. been crying. I had been crying a lot. Dee Dee, hang on a second. Sweetheart. And sweaty. Dee Dee, hang on a second. Whatever. Hang on a second. I, I no, was hang, on a, hang on a second, Dee Dee. Okay. You know as well as I do. Abraham Shakespeare was killed the night of August of April sixth. Okay. Is that right anyway. or wrong? Is that right? Let's just start off on on just these little baby steps. Is is Detective Wallace right or wrong? April sixth. April 6th, and you know that. 2009, April 6th, no, 2009. I do not. Look at, I told you, you need to go and wait until they give you time of death and check that on time of yeah, death. April 6th. We're, we're, okay. This isn't CSI okay. forensic files and crap like that. Okay. okay? Anyways, so then I had him come back over and fill in the hole. They promised me, they promised me he was not in that hole. I know now they lied to me. I always had that. So you're saying they Meaning the partially guys. filled in a hole? No, that, well, they just, yeah, just a little bit. And then James came back over and and um, filled it back in, you know, after I So let me ask you they, this. If they, James, put if dirt, they put dirt in it to cover everything up. And then James came back and just pushed the dirt over. So if James comes back thinking he's pushing dirt back over. Concrete. Concrete, and he doesn't see any freaking concrete there, come on. He, it's dark. It's it's late. It's he honestly did not know. He honestly, I swear to you, on a whatever, he did not know. He would not do hang that. On, hang He's on, been a good man. Hang on. I, I had to ask you something beforehand. You know we're at the house. We know we're at both houses. Uh -huh. What are the codes to get in those safes? Because otherwise we're going to break them all open. The safes that are at the house. The safes. The safes at your all Oh, the, the old ones? Yeah, what are the combinations? Um, you can look at them. They're, uh, I would have to probably ask Shar. There was coats right up top. They should be on pieces of paper. They should be on pieces of paper. You don't know the coats off the top of your head? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But they should be on pieces of paper on mm -hmm. top of there, and if not, Shar knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shar left me. Cause of Where is Shar? He left. He moved him back in with his cousin because he feels like I should have turned this guy in if I knew that he could have hurt Abraham. He thinks that I should have done it back then instead of waiting and being scared of him. And so what if the guy killed me? You know, if he killed Abraham, I should have done something then about it if I knew about it. And he said, that, you know, that's wrong. That's a life. And he, I agree with him. I, I should have. I was really, really scared. I was very scared. Let me, um, I got a couple of voicemails. I need to check. I'm expecting some other phone calls. Let me step out for a minute and check that, okay? okay. What do, you, do you have tattoos on the bottom of your feet? No. Everybody was giving me, I've never been to prison, and everybody told me I'm going to be arrested because of this, and so they told me that they got to take away all your papers. Let me see what's on the bottom of your feet. So they told me to write my phone number of how to get out on my foot to my lawyer. <laughs> what's on your other foot? Nothing. There's another number on there. Oh, I must have. Oh, I forgot to put that one on there. All right, well, so let me. It's just phone numbers because they said that they take away all your paper and everything. All right, well, let me I've check this voice out real quick before we carry on, okay? Hang on. Oh. Hang on a second. We've got off on other foots here and there, left and right sometimes. The, the stories you're giving don't, don't, don't make sense, okay? And if you can't convince me, then you're not going to convince anybody, okay? End of story. Look at me and don't hide your head. Look at me and don't hide your head. Listen to, listen to me. Listen to me. You talk way too much. Listen to me, okay? 
there may be truth in some of the stuff you say, but you do not tell the whole truth, okay? I can tell you right now, look at my eyes. Don't look down, look at me when I talk to you, okay? You may not have shot him, okay? But I'm telling you right now, you were involved, okay? And you are the one who orchestrated what happened, okay? Now, if you want to come truthful, and you honestly want to not spend the rest of your life in jail, because you're going to go to jail, you're going to go to prison, and then you're going to go to prison for a while, okay? Now, if you honestly want to come truthful, and you, and you know the other part is, look at me. Don't bury your face, okay? Let's look at what's happened, because we all know what's happened here, okay? If you honestly want to, to make things right, okay, and I think you're, you believe in God, and you want to repent or whatever, okay, the truth's got to come out, and it's got to come out today, okay? No more of the convoluted stories about here, and they were hiding in this room, and they were this. Listen to me. Don't do this. That they were hiding in the room, okay? Maybe they were in the house. Maybe there was someone in the house, but they were there because you had them there. They weren't there because you were scared of them. Dee Dee, listen to me. Listen to me, and don't make these these <sighs> dramatic. And the, uh, no, 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 no! Stop! 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 The tears and all that don't work. Why do I want them dead? Why? Tell me. Because they got you caught. Because they got you caught. Because who got me caught? Hmm? You got yourself caught. For what? For the murder of Abraham Shakespeare. No, I mean, why, why would I have him killed? Why would I have him killed? Why would I have somebody come there and Dee -dee, kill him? Dee Dee. Why? Dee Dee. Dee Dee what? stole all his money. I did not steal Dee -dee. it. Ask Cedric. Dee -dee. Cedric says I stole it. Dee -dee. Cedric, the people you that know. stole all No, I did I would not money. kill him over Dee -dee. money. Dee Dee, listen to me. Look at me and don't get mad. Let's have a normal conversation where I don't have to raise my voice and mm -hmm. we don't have to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. Let's have a normal DD to day conversation, mm -hmm. okay? You stole the money, mm -hmm. okay? I can prove it, okay? You can prove Dee -dee, it with look people at me. that tell Dee -dee, you Dee -dee, I look stole at it. me. Look at me. I, I can prove me. it with paperwork, okay? You never paid for the house. You never paid for the assets. You drew all that paperwork up. Okay, you ha might have had him sign it even. Okay, and I don't know. Hey, I don't know the reason why. I don't know if you convinced him that everything was your name that Centoria couldn't get it. I don't know why you can, how you convinced him to give you everything without paying for it, which it is. Okay, I can't fill in that. The only two people that can probably answer that are you and Abraham, and obviously Abraham ain't talking. Okay, keep listening because I'm going to lay it all out here for you. Okay, I'm going to lay it all out here for you. You didn't pay a dime. In February, okay. Now your interviews were the. Let me let me rephrase or repeat what happened in your interviews with you, okay? Yeah. You told me, oh, I bought everything. I said, well, you know, after a couple of interviews and I started getting financial stuff, I said, you know what, Dee Dee? I said, I don't see anywhere where you paid that money. Oh, I, I had cash around my house and I paid him cash. That was bullshit. You know that, okay? You didn't pay, all right? So then in February. You decide to make Abraham Shakespeare LLC, all right? And it was you and him and Judy, and you were going to make him, and you were going to get his last money from the annuity, and that money was going to go into an account where you, you and him had access to, okay? So you made the meeting minutes, and you sent them off to Bank of America, okay? And then who was present? You, Judy, and Abraham Shakespeare were present, okay? And what was the purpose of the first meeting on February 10th when he deposited the $1.095 million? The purpose was to put Abraham Shakespeare on the account, to be able to draw money out of that account, okay? All three of you were present for this meeting, and you sent it to them. Well, you know, they keep financial records forever. They never go away. So I have a copy of that, a certified copy of that, mm -hmm. okay? There was no activity on that account for seven days. But on February 17th, you sent another meeting minutes. Of course, this time, the only person attendant was Doris Moore, mm -hmm. the the leader of the band, the, the president or CEO of the company. And what was the purpose of that meeting? Oh, that's right. Abraham was under investigation for criminal wrongdoing and fraud and everything else. And he needed to be taken off of that account. Okay? Then miraculously, the very next day, Dee Dee, $250,000 goes to ASTAT, goes to Shars Company. 250000 goes here. 200000 goes there. Two hundred twenty to American Medical Professionals. All the money starts going around. Then miraculously, wow, what's happening? Oh, well, it's time to get Char Corvette. 
Oh, it's time. Don't say anything. It's time to get a Corvette. It's time to get a trade-in truck, or it's time to get a new Hummer. It's time to get a new this. It's time to buy a house down on Highway 60. Okay? I have financial records for all of that. Every single bit of it. Okay? No, don't say anything. I told you I'll lay it out. All right? Now use your mind and think about it real long. You stole every dime of that. You took nice trips to Vegas. You did all these things. Okay? You never had means for all that before. You know? You got greedy. You got greedy. I had lots of trips before Didi. that. I had fallen Didi. water. I Didi. had California. Didi. I had New Didi. York. Listen to me. You had a decent... You, you don't let me finish. Because if you let me finish, you'd hear the rest of what I had to say. Okay? Mm -hmm. You had a decent business going. Decent. Okay? Nothing fantastic. Not the $4 million that you talk about. Not the $3 million. Not the way you portray yourself as this lavish, rich and famous. No, you had a pretty good business. And you know what? Have you, had you been content with that? You'd be living a pretty decent lifestyle right now. You'd probably be living still in Walden Lake. You might have found your house somewhere over there, and you'd be living good, okay? But something about you, there's something about you, there's something deep down in your heart or in your mind, it's greed, and it just gets to you. And you need more and more and more. And you take advantage of people, and you con them, and you do whatever you can. And you did it to Abraham. Abraham was the ultimate mistake, you know? You got the $1.095 million, okay? You had it, okay? That's in February. You spent, don't shake your head, because you know what I'm telling you is the truth. You records don't lie. Financial records yeah, but, don't lie. But listen if you to talk me. to the people... Listen, finish listening okay. to me. The There's no one to talk to, okay? okay? You've gone on for months and you said, talk to this person and you talk to that person and talk to here. You know what? I've done it. I've talked to all these people. I've sat down. I've sat down with your family. I sat Mom down... Listen to me. I sat down with your sister. Mm -hmm. With your sister. And your brother-in-law, mm -hmm. okay? Guess what? The whole family was wondering... Where the hell is she getting this money? Mm -hmm. She's never had money like this before. She had a little money. It was okay. But my God, she just moved into a million dollar home. She just got this. She just bought him a new Corvette. She just got this. Okay? But of course, you know what? You're their daughter and you're their sister and you're this stuff. And they want to believe you. Nobody wants to believe that, that what, what could have happened, what's going on. But so they, no, don't, but okay. just listen to me. They all wanted to believe you. You know? I, you know, James wants to, wanted to believe you. Everybody wanted to believe you. But somewhere in your mind, something happened. Something snapped and something clicked, and you did this. You took the guy's money, you got everything in your name, and all of a sudden, wow, it comes up to April time. You know, you go and you get a power of attorney for Judy, this and that. Everything leads to another, and then miraculously, two days afterwards, guess what happened? Abraham Shakespeare gets killed. Not only does he get killed, he gets killed at your office. He gets killed with your gun. And he gets, gets buried on your property. your property, and you pour a slab within a week later, right over where he's at. There's only one hole dug. It was dug by your ex-husband. Prior to that, you wanted the hole dug right behind that house. Mm -hmm. Right behind the house. That'd you be told awfully James, convenient. Here. Because you can reel the body right out there and throw it in. But James tells you, no, I can't dig it here. There's too many pipes and shit going around here. Electrical pipe. That's too close to the foundation of a house. Of a house. So guess what? We're going to have to build it. So she, so you walk him out and say, okay, well, let's put it right here. So you do. You dig it out. And unfortunately, Dee Dee, with that little plan you had, right now I've got supervisors and people higher up in the sheriff of this county that want to not only lock you up, they want to lock away James too. And guess where that leaves RJ? Without a mom and a dad. Because you, you, because you wrapped him into this whole thing. Okay. Fifteen years old. Didn't he just celebrate a birthday? He just turned fifteen. And he's these, a kid. And these little things, these stories about these people, you know what? I may halfway believe it. There, was, there may have been somebody else involved, okay? But do you know why they were involved? Because you got them involved. It you wasn't a drug deal going bad. Thing. It wasn't a drug deal gone bad. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a... It wasn't some kind of robbery. If it was a robbery, it was one you set up, okay? You know what you did? You went over to his house that night, you picked him up, and you told him, hey, we're going to go meet Judy at the Hard Rock. And somewhere on the way there, you decided, oh, hey, i got to go down to my, to, my, to my office down in Plant City. Abraham thinks, okay, well, we're going to stop by there on the way to going up to Hard Rock. Judy was at the Hard Rock waiting for you guys. She was pulling the slots. Pulling the slots. I got video of her pulling the slots that night. So you go over there, you tell in, you fill in the blanks, because Abraham gets killed that night. Then what happens? 2.55 in the morning, you decide to call Judy. 
So you call Judy and you have a 53-minute conversation because you're freaking out at this time. You know, your whole plan's into motion, but God damn, we've got to figure out what's going to happen. So then the next day, after his dead body lays there in your place, overnight, you call James and you get James to dig these holes and do this and you cover it up. And a week later, you get cement laid over the thing. And then all of a sudden, you start making text messages to people and you start calling people with his phone. And you get all this thing going for months and months and months. And my God, you thought you got away with it. You thought you had gotten away with it all the way through November. Mm -hmm. And then we get involved. And then you try like hell. For three weeks, you try like hell with us. I text him. I text him right here, and he calls me back in a couple days. And I talked to him on October 6th with my lawyer. I was right there, and I talked to him. Oh, my lawyer talked to him. Oh, yeah, he's fine. He goes off on here. He's with this girl. He left with that girl. Think about the convoluted stories that you came up with the whole time. And then what I do, I showed you where you lied. I showed you where it was wrong, and you came honest then. Not because you wanted to, not because you wanted to, but because I had the proof right in front of you. I had to spoon feed you and show you everything that happened. And then you said, yep, yeah, you're right, I had the phone. Oh, but Abraham wanted me to have the phone because Abraham knew that you watched CSI and he knew you were going to tra track him, you know. And then I talked to you and I said, you know, but I I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you the truth from now on. From now on, Mr. Dr. Detective Wallace, I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay, the very next breath, Hey, Dee Dee, would you ever pay anybody any money at all to say they've seen Shakespeare, Abraham Shakespeare? I wouldn't do that, Detective Wallace. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't give somebody a house to say they saw Abraham Shakespeare? Nah, Detective Wallace, I wouldn't. I would never do that. Dee Dee, me and Clark, Dee Dee, would you, would you give her a house? Would you do that to Centoria Butler? Oh, she's a liar. I'd never do that. Well, guess what? Here's the audio tape and you guys talking. Okay, I did, but God, it's just because you're, it's just because you guys are driving me crazy. You're ruining my life. That man's away from here, and he's on here, he's away from here because he wants to be away from here. I've talked to him, he doesn't want to be here, I just can't do it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and it goes on and on. So then what happens? What happens? December 27th comes around, and you go over, I mean, did you want to talk about devious? Come on, Dee Dee. You went and picked up his mother. You took her out to dinner. You had Greg Smith call the phone and talk to his mother and say he was Abraham Shakespeare. You had Greg Smith do this, okay? Oh, don't tell the police, Mama, because they're just out looking for me. You orchestrated everything to be said to Miss Walker, a 70-something-year-old woman whose son is laying rotten underneath your freaking cement pad. I was scared. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, let me finish. So you do that. Okay? Well, you know what? Miss Walker called us because we had been talking to Miss Walker. Miss Walker says, hey, I don't think it was my son. So what do I do? I find out the number that it calls from, and I know it's Greg Smith. So what do I do? I go hunting down Greg Smith, and where do I find Greg Smith the very next day? I find him at Lakeland Mall meeting with you in the parking lot, and I watch. And then he goes from there, and he goes over to the to the uh, radio shack where he buys two new phones because oh, we're listening to your phone and we know everything. So you need to get two new phones because you're living this secret lifestyle. You're trying to deceive everybody. You know. So as soon as you leave there, I follow Greg right down into the hood and guess what? I pull Greg over and I say, Greg, guess what? You got a choice here, son. You got two things. You can either jump on board with me or you can go right down the river with somebody else. And guess what Greg said? I'm on board with you, Mr. Wallace. I'll do anything you say. From that point on, Dee Dee, every time he met you, I recorded it. I've got a recording of every conversation when you're sitting in the car at the mall talking. When you guys met at Denny's in Plant City, I was watching the whole time. I was right there. Every single time. I've got the audio tapes to prove it. Okay? So then you come up with this plan where you want to write the letter. You get the hotel right there, at I, right there by the mall. You go up and you type this letter. And I've got it all on audio where you're typing it. And you're making fun. And you ah, and what? how does this sound? And you go on. And then you go and drop him off to go put it in her mailbox. Well, you know what? It didn't go in her mailbox. It went straight to me because I was watching that night. And then you come back down where you parked at the Waffle House that night because I was sitting in the damn parking lot watching. I was sitting right there. So I get the letter, this nice two-page letter from an illiterate man talking about how 
Mom, I can't believe you didn't know it was my voice. I've got the letter. So you go to that extreme, and you're ah, laughing and joking about it, and you're getting excited. So, you know, a couple of days go by, and you get a little nervous because you haven't heard nothing about this letter. Not a thing. So we let, make it be known to you that, oh, she got the letter, you know? Because guess what? The whole time that Detective Clark was talking to you, I was listening every time. You know, when you thought that he was, like, not paying attention to me, and you thought he was on your side, no, 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 uh-uh. Me and that man are brothers, okay? Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing that he does that I don't know about. There ain't nothing I do he don't know about, okay? So then he tells you, and he, leaves, he lets the little bag out. God, you know, what about this letter? Her, her, her pastor called and said this. Oh, well, guess what? You get excited at that point, and you start thinking, hey, this might have worked. This might have worked. But no, let's go on. So it gets a little deeper. Grady Judd decides to do some news conferences. Things are getting a little worse, and you start getting desperate. You start getting real desperate. So what do you do? You go to Greg again. Hey, Greg, do you know anybody that might be able to say they did something? Now, this is when it finally changes from we got to convince everybody Abraham's alive to i got to figure out because shit's coming down on me. Right, it's panic mode now. So you go to Greg and you say, Greg, listen to me. I gotta no, know. it's because Cedric... Let him know. Finish. Okay. finish. Don't come up with a story. Just listen to me. Okay. So you go to Greg. Hey, Greg, do you know anybody? Do you have anybody that might be going to jail for a long time, that might take the rap and say they did something to, to, to Abraham Shakespeare. Well, Greg, yeah, he knows somebody. He knows undercover officer from Lake Wales, Mike Smith. Yep. I guess we'll meet at the Coles in his white car. An undercover officer. Well, you know, that's the same guy that you tried to say was one of the people to Clark the other night. Of course, that was shot down. So anyway, you meet with him. You're going to pay him $10,000 now and $40,000 over the rest of the year. To, to say that he killed Abraham Shakespeare, but there's only one problem. When it comes time for him to confess to this man or to me, guess what he's going to have to do? He's going to have to produce a body. More importantly, he might even have to produce the gun. So you meet Greg on Monday morning, right over there in Plant City at Turkey Creek. Well, you meet him at the mall to begin with. Then you meet him over at Turkey Creek. And then you go down to your mom's house, you go a few places, I watch you the whole time. You know, I'm following right behind you. You're not very good. You don't pay attention. Whatever. You've done a few things. You tried to, a couple of times I followed you. You stopped at Walmart parking lot and waited 15 minutes before you went down to Stitzel's office after you wrote the letter that night. I sat right across the street and watched it. Anyway, let me get back on point. <clears throat> so you give him the gun. You know, the gun that you bought at the, at the, at the uh, gun show in Tampa. You know, there's records and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, and you thought Greg was going to file off all the serial numbers and bury it somewhere else and... His buddy D was going to bury it somewhere else and say the gun's over here and this and that. But that's not enough. We still need the body. So about two hours later, you meet him there again. He gets in the truck with you and you go right down to the property. And what do you do? You walk him right out. Not anywhere else. Not over here, not over there. The piece of iron. Bam. It's right under here. you got to dig down from the side. you got to get it. I'm going to have my mother-in-law or Char's mom come have dinner with us tonight. There's not going to be anybody here. And I got it all planned out. I got the trailer with everything in it. Supplies. I got the supplies. Nice big galvanized tub, bleach, gloves. It's all there and you angle it. And then you go over to James's house and you get the boat. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Guess what? There's another reason that it looks pretty bad for James. Now he's got the boat. Now he's really tied into this thing. Can you come up with this concocted story about having a cover made or something? You know, all this stuff. So you got it just set up. You walk the CI. It's all on audio. He's right there. He's right there. And then the story was, oh, he was, they were trying to rob him. Well, I was going to set up. You are going to rob him. Things went bad. And you, you want to whisper, but we get them all. You know, we got good things. Right in there. Right in my office. With my gun. And it goes on. Dee Dee, it's all over. It's all over. Any name that you have been throwing out in this concocted store going back to Monday night, we pretty much have ruled those, a lot of these folks out. It's we ruled them out. That's what we get paid to do, Dee Dee. Dee Dee, you... Dee Dee, I know it's just like you, okay? There's some problems here, all right? It's time for you. No, don't butt. Don't butt. Believe me, do not but, okay? Look, everything collapsed on you. It's done and it's over with. 
You know everything I've told you from the very beginning is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but it. And now is your time. Okay? Because I'm telling you, you're going to be judged in this lifetime. But even more importantly, you're going to be judged in the next. Okay. you got that 15-year-old boy to think about. you got a 15-year-old son, and I'm telling you right now, with the plan you came up with, I don't think you ever in your life thought it would all come to come down like this. But I ain't lying to you. I got you. you know how Sheriff Judd is. And I'm telling you right now, him and Sheriff G are running the same way. And they want to put everybody in jail. And they're coming after you. They're coming after your husband, your ex-husband. Okay? Personally, yeah, how can they come after him? I just You're going to have to you. prove to us. With the truth. With a valid statement that is a truth. If you're saying he is not involved, then I want to hear why I want to hear the truth why he's not. And you're gonna to have to do some proving to make us believe that he's not implicated in this whole thing. Detective Wallace just orchestrated and laid out a ten month timeline of some very in depth investigation. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of man hours of an entire unit from a large sheriff's office. Like I said, between the two offices, we have unlimited resources. Okay, you've got probably the top two sheriff's offices in the south end of Florida on this one case. Probably okay, it's not gonna get by. It's not gonna get by. Just, it's just time. The book has been open, the page is laid out, we know it all. The money, I, I wanna explain the money. I'll let you I, explain I want more. to explain the money. Well, the money was, we'll listen to it. It was honest, if you asked Cedric, you ask Judy, you ask him. No, let me tell you. He was hiding his assets from Tory. He didn't I, want you You're right. To Don't listen to me. You're right. But you know what happened? What? You kind of put that in his head, okay? Listen to me. Don't get mad. Stop. Just stop. Just stop. Don't get mad. Look at me. Look at me. It got in his head. Okay, that's fine. But what happened was... He wanted to get rid of it, and you you were trustworthy. He believed in you. He thought, yeah, I'm, I, I'm there. That's fine. You're, you're, smart. you're a smart woman. You're a white you, lady. You actually gave him money to pay. It started off you're innocently. You're a business owner. Not, you I'm already have this. It started off innocently, but what killed you was greed. You know it, and I know. Didi, don't and know. big Listen dollar sign can take over thoughts Listen and me. impulses. It was like that. Yes, it, it was. wasn't. I promise it wasn't. Didi, you spent every dime. And guess what happened? No, no, no. Listen to me. He went to family members before it happened, and he said, something ain't right. This white lady, something ain't right. And he figured it out. There wasn't no money left to pay him back. He told me to buy a house on 60. So if he, he quit the look, I'm not. He worried. wanted the investment. That he, I was yeah. supposed to give him the cash he, when the paintball field started running. I was supposed to give he, him the cash. Did you just listen to me? None of that really matters. Talk about why he killed him. Why it happened. Get your get get James out of it. Stop all the stories. James save James. yourself. No. Hold on. Save your son's future. Because without it, because right now, it's a future without a mother and a father. Okay. Well, James, At least get it to where there's a father. Jim right? had nothing to do with it, but I did not kill that man. Well, then explain it with a real explanation, not some convoluted this and that. And a explain real it to us of how James is not involved. And not your stories. I told you how. He didn't know. He had no clue. What, what was in that hole with Abraham's body? that would not have allowed James to walk by a six foot, probably it was more like a seven to eight foot length hole, rectangular dug out hole or trench as, as I should note it as, I would say a trench, yeah. by probably about three and a half to four feet wide with the body wide. placed so nicely on the side. And how in the hell could James not see that? Because it, he, got right onto the excavator. He didn't like pay attention to that. He was just there to fill in the hole. He would not ever do something like that. James would never, ever, ever. He's a person that we divorced because I helped every low life, every person. I never would say no to anybody. I helped everybody. I took in stragglers. I helped everybody I could. I would pay other people's car payments when they couldn't pay them. Well, I don't think that's the basis that. for your divorce, and that's, that's neither you know. here nor there, because we had a long, extensive conversation with James, and I kind of know why. Well, and we know why the divorce why? happened. 
Uh, I'm probably for some infidelity with Shar. Uh, yeah. Am I right or wrong? No, he was cheating on me. Regardless. James was cheating right. on me. Is that, that's cheating. neither here nor there. We're not worried okay. about that. We're here about Abraham Shakespeare. Okay. He, he's the, the focal truth. point of this, and, and, and we're after the truth. And from your stories that you were I, divulging on Monday night, I'll nah. find out sworn statement. James did not have any. Dee Dee. I'm not worried about sworn statements from you. I need the truth from you. Not sworn statement. A sworn statement from you with but as many lies you told her. Don't believe nothing. me. There was. You don't believe me that there was someone there. I had. No, 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 Dee Dee. I believe you that there was someone there. Okay. But I believe you set the whole thing up. I know you did. Are you gonna tell me? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Are you going to sit here and tell me that after you coaxed him to go to the Hard Rock Cafe, that the one night that you get, or the Hard Rock Casino, he when you to go there. listen to me, don't try and okay. justify okay. shit okay. and listen okay. to me. Okay. Okay. The one night, it happens to be April 6th, that you decide you're going to go meet Judy. You set it all up. You're going to pick him up. And you happen to have to go by your office on the way there. That that night, somebody has mysteriously gotten there and is going to rob you. Come on, there's not 12 people that's going to believe that story, okay? Look, stop with the silly stories. He it was had all up. his stuff that he moved out of his house. He was moving. He had boxes that he had moved out of his house. Yeah, we know about those boxes, okay. and we know about what happened to those boxes. What happened to the boxes? Joseph Resendez moved those boxes after he was dead. Who's Joseph Resendez? Joseph Resendez? That would be Shannon Gunn's brother, the one that worked for you. Okay, Shannon Gunn, the same one that you let drive Abraham's car around, mm -hmm. the same one that I've talked to. Mm -hmm. And guess what night that was? Mm -hmm. well, that was April 7th. Mm -hmm. So you take Abraham's car and have her drive it around Plant City until mm -hmm. you've got to get it back a couple days later, his car, and you're so worried and scared that now you've got to get that car, and you've got to take that car and sell it to get your truck. You know, you didn't live the life of somebody who was scared, Dee Dee. Okay? Not yeah, only that, that not only that, as soon as he's dead, what did you do? You move on into his house. As soon if as you were dead, so you move into scared his house. of these individuals, why in the hell would you move into this man's house and put because your fifteen year old son safe. in there? Because it was safe because of you can't get past that first gate. I don't buy that. Oh I don't buy that. Dee Dee. Give me a break. It was Dee Dee. It was safe. Dee Dee. So somebody that you're you scared of is the life of a scared woman. Not at all. Dee Dee. Look at how much money I Dee -dee. take out of the bank and give them. Look at my bank account that says Abraham Shakespeare. Months later, I'm still writing them out to Abraham Shakespeare. Because you want to make it look like he's alive. That's why you did all that, Dee Dee. You've spent all this money. Come on, Dee Dee. The stories have got okay, to Okay, how about end. Cedric? How, what about yeah. him with all that? Tell okay, me. let me tell you something. Okay, tell let me, me about tell you something Cedric. about Cedric. Okay. This is probably the only smart thing Cedric's ever done in his life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every conversation that you have with him, Cedric recorded. And guess what? You wear that? Night, he gave them to us. And we listened to him. And guess what you were doing with Cedric? You were telling him the same silly ass stories you were telling us. We've got it all on tape. You're basically almost to the point of blackmailing the guy about his house. About his house. If and you don't he, go to the police and tell the police that he's been, you've seen him, I'm going to kick you out of this house, but I'll sign the house over to you. Joga. If you go to him and take back your story, I'll sign it over. Oh, hey, I got something else. I got the affidavit you wanted him to sign. He gave that to me too. Dee Dee, that's not going to fly either. Let's that, go to the next door. That recording had your voice on there saying that Abraham wants Cedric out of that house. And then Cedric has the notion to say, if he wants me out of this house, have him come here and tell me. Or better yet, if he's texting, supposedly, have him text me his picture. That's pretty damn crafty. You know what? That just removed him from that whole scenario, Dee Dee. That's mine. Dee Dee, your stories have all fallen off. You can't come up with a new one. The only story that's going to last now is the truth. I'm telling you, it's all done. Okay? The minute this guy dies, you move into the house. Because you know what? The day before he was killed, Courtney was still living there. And guess where I was last week when you called me? Remember when you called me and I was at lunch and you were talking to me? I was in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta with Courtney. 
Okay? Courtney had to go over to St. Petersburg. She left that Saturday or Sunday before he got killed on Monday. She left and was going to St. Petersburg with her friend. And she was living with Abraham at the time. And guess who wasn't living with Abraham at the time? Even more. And guess what happened? She left and she was supposed to, Judy was supposed to go pick her up. She talked to Abraham the night before he died. Then April 6th, she keeps trying to call him, can't get him. Well, she doesn't get a hold of you. Oh, and you told her, oh, Abraham left with that girl from Publix. That girl, that girl from the store. Well, you know, we've talked to her. She's married and lives in South Lakeland still. We've talked to her several times. So she didn't leave. He didn't leave with her. So guess what? She has to get a bus to come back here. And guess what? I've got all those dates from the bus rides. So then she comes back, and Judy picks her up and takes her out to the, to the house where she goes inside. Guess what? Dee Dee and her family's done moved into the house. So your frightened-ass person who's just been, oh, my God, Abraham's been killed in front of me. Hey, let's pack all our shit and yeah. move over there. Let me move my 15-year-old son in there and put him up in, what, uh, like, a, like a guest suite guess apartment all by away himself? From me. Oh, it's so safe around these drug dealer robber guys that just murdered somebody in my, wa in my office and I'm in fear of them. There. Alarm, come the on, alarm give me a break. Up, then. It takes us 30 and, minutes to get to North Lake. And, and I did not move right in. you got to look at the date. I, I did not okay. move right okay, in. Dee -dee. I was not in there and moved in. When she came up, I didn't move in until like a month later. No, a month. You were there. You were there. I have and to look at this date. Listen, and, that's, and it was funny. Here's the other funny part of this. It just doesn't... <laughs> unbelievable. None of this makes sense. None of your story can make sense at one all. It's just over. Just tell the truth. Don't what, let me say What were you were saying? Fun. Something else. Go ahead. Say it. TV, why do I need to keep going? No, I've it. told it all. I've told it all. Well, I'm tired the, of telling the, the money part. He did that. I told you so. He wouldn't have to pay gift tax. He didn't want that. He gave you everything he had and said, "Don't pay for me because I don't want to pay the gift he tax." He doesn't want to pay. See, that makes a lot of sense. Because I'm supposed to hold on to it till he comes back. He's supposed to be getting money when he wants. And he did. He got money when he was. Uh, hang on a minute. He's not coming back because we just dug him out of your property. You knew that. You knew that from the get-go. You told the CI on the tape. Did he, you knew he was dead on April 6th. You had the whole dug for him to die to be buried in. You, buried, you, you went as far as to have concrete poured over top of where it was at. A 30, I think a 30 by 30 foot concrete slab. Now, what would you say? Maybe eight to nine inches thick? Oh, it was $5,000. I got the invoice. I talked to that guy. That's before. a hell of a concrete slab to, to cover. And not to mention, they didn't even, even really form the there. stuff out. They it just was, threw it over grass. Yeah, but it was for two. It was for the boat and the... It, and the other thing yeah, okay, you could have put the boat and whatever else you buy we were, and put a, whatever, a little a cover, cover I got, patio, I got an estimate to Okay, what that's neither here could, nor there. That's something you would have used functionally after the fact that you have this concrete to solidify the fact that you got a human being buried on your property thinking, gee, nobody's going to find this guy buried underneath this $5,000 30-foot by 30-foot, 8-inch thick concrete slab. Dee, this isn't one you can talk your way out of. The only way out of this, the only way to save your son, the despair of losing both parents, is to tell the truth to Greg right here. I told you, it, James had no clue that. Okay, that all was right. It. Let's let's just remove that aspect of this so, conversation out of there. Okay, I, you know, I'll, I'll chew on that. I'll chew on the fact that James has nothing to do with it. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that and chew on that. But I'm having a hard time believing that. And you've got a lot of convincing and proving to do. Since this case is now involving my county, and I'm tasked with the investigation of the homicide of Abraham Shakespeare. Didn't you give him a lie detector test? Can't you lie we don't need. We don't need to tell We're you what we did or not. We're talking about you and the fact that you got a 15-year-old child you that's potentially got to lose me. both parents to a prison sentence. But you don't believe me that I didn't kill him, so lock me up and I'll prove in court I didn't kill him. Because if you tell me the truth, jury. because if you tell us the truth right now, what you tell us will depend on our forensics that we just uncovered, the scenes that we have just processed, and we will know whether well, or not, hang on a minute, let me finish. We will know if you are telling us the truth. Why can't you from forensics? Measure my we height. We want to hear it. Measure my height and what gun and what velocity. We want to hear it from your mouth. Measure it from me. And we shall know whether or not you are spinning another bullshit story or if you are telling us the truth then. 
And then maybe that will rule out James, as you say he's not involved. Maybe that will rule him out, depending on what you tell us. And we're going to know from the get-go if it's bullshit or not. Okay, we have been at your property since frickin' Monday night. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You've had two sheriff's offices and multiple crime scene investigators out there for a week. And we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to play around there some more and get exactly what we need. Do you, think we're just, you need. do you think we're just out get there eating, barbecuing, and having get coffee every morning? Get whatever you need. I didn't do it. So take me to jail. Well, it sure as hell looks like you did. Well, take me to jail and, and I'll prove it in court. Tell us, then tell, uh, let, let's hear. Let's hear your, your uh, rationale. Let's hear your reasoning. You let's don't hear believe your story. me. No, I'm gonna let, I'll, I'll entertain your story. Your, you don't your believe story me. Here. My lawyer will get to the bottom of it and he will... He will Get the truth, and it will be in court. I, I told you, I'll listen go to ahead you. And go ahead and I told you, I'll listen to you. Prove you don't up. believe me because you haven't said the truth yet. Okay, you think think about this. Here's what I was going to say a minute ago. Okay, to believe your story, two murderous thugs killed Abraham Shakespeare, but they're going to leave you a witness alive. They didn't care about killing because Abraham Shakespeare. Because I could still get them more money out of the banks. Look at the mm -hmm. amounts of checks I wrote out. Look at, where did I spend that Was there even money? any money Look left? Look at all that cash. At that point, was there any yes, money Yes, plenty, plenty. And look at all that cash. And look at how many times I took cash out so they could get more money from me mm -hmm. that Dee, they would come up and get. Dee, Dee I know where all the money went. I watched it all. I got a whole, I got a whole list of where your money went. Okay, how about all the money that did went the, to Cedric? Did on. you take, did, did the, he give you a list of that? Yes. Okay. Cedric didn't do Katie, we know Cedric's not involved. I know that. I just wanted to make sure he... No, you wanted money. to tell us he was involved until you found out that we had... Because I here. wasn't sure he wasn't the one that sent them because he really worried me. <laughs> Are you serious? And I found out he wasn't, but I did, well, always, did knew, five minutes ago, I always knew. Five minutes ago, if I hadn't told you that we had the audio tapes, you were going to tell us it was Cedric. No, you were going to tell... Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. Oh, Dee Dee. I was not. I was saying Dee Dee. that I thought there is somebody Dee Dee. that knew what kind of money that was out there. There was somebody, either family, friend, Dee Dee. something knew what kind of money was out Dee Dee. there. And that's whoever knew Dee Dee. sent them out there. Dee Dee, you spent all that money. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. So you're talking about when I got out five thousand and ten thousand dollars cash. What do I have in my house that I have spent five and ten thousand? Most of that stuff I put in my house. I bought before I even got there. Look at what my Stevenson house looked like before. Look at the pictures Katie, on the internet. Stop and don't mind. fucking yell at me. I haven't yelled at you once today. Yes, you've been good. I won't. Sorry. All right. The stories aren't working. I'm trying to tell you, and if you would sit there and open up your mind and really think, you would understand that that 20 minutes conversation that I gave to you puts you in jail for the rest of your life. It's over. It is over. Now, just a few minutes ago, you said that we won't listen to you and all that stuff. And I said, I'll entertain your, your rendition. I'll listen to you. You came here on your own free will to talk to us. Did you not? Did you not text Detective Clark and say you want to talk to him and uh, the Hillsborough County detective over no, the case? No, he asked me if I wanted to. Well, it looked like the text was sent to him in that, in that response yeah. that you wanted to talk to us. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, but I didn't know it was going to be the same thing where you didn't believe me for there was somebody else there. That I, never said, I never so, said I wasn't going to believe you. I'm relying on the investigation that we have done for one I week at your property. You think I shot a man, dragged him all the way by myself, over to a hole that's clear across, across the way. I'm, I've seen it beside freaking blood. I couldn't be an RN or an LPN. I went to EM school, and because of EMT school, I realized I didn't like blood. I didn't like being around mm -hmm. it. I worked as a CNA. I opened up my own shop so I didn't have to. Okay. And I'm going to take a body all the way over there by myself. Maybe. Here's the problem. There may have been somebody else, but it's not like you're saying, okay? Abraham was killed the night of April 6th. He wasn't buried until April 7th, okay? So you're going to tell me you see a guy get killed in front of you in your place with your gun. Then you go home with Char, okay? I go home with Char. Hmm? You go home to Char mm -hmm. that night, and then you come back the next day to two guys that are still waiting for you with a dead body, 
okay? You don't call the police. You don't do anything, okay? None of that. You're going to actually think that a jury is going to believe that crap. Oh, because, hang on, hold on, let me, let me answer. Because they threatened to hurt my son. Well, how exactly would they have hurt your son had you driven to your house, dialed 911, and said, these people are at my house with a dead body now? Guess what would have happened? They would have been arrested that yeah. day. Yeah. They, so how could they have hurt you? Gonna, how would they, they have hurt you? They put a gun in my mouth. I peed my pants. I peed Dee -dee. my pants. I was scared. I don't care. Just Dee -dee. arrest me. Hey, no, no, hang on a minute. I, I don't want to just arrest you. I, w I want the truth, okay? Hang on a minute. Take a sip of water. Take a breath. Take a drink. You want to talk, okay? You, you let Detective Clark know and all that. Um, yeah, I've never met you, okay? This is the first meeting, okay? I see, you know, you're emotional, you're getting up and down. I just want to make sure all's on the up and up. Have you been drinking anything today or anything? I mean, do you use any type of prescriptions or narcotics or anything like that? No. I'm just asking. That's part of my job. Okay. I'll be willing to take a drug test. I've I'm never, not asking you to I take a drug test. I don't do anything bad okay. in my life. Mm -hmm. I never have done drugs, and I don't even drink and drive. Okay. And I'm getting charged with murder, something I did. Did I? Do, do you see an affidavit here? Did, did I say anything about being charged with murder? Did I? No. Okay. We're talking. We're just talking. Am I right or wrong? I know, but you're convinced, and he's convinced. I'm, I'm not convinced. convinced. I'm not convinced. I'm convinced in the fact that we're not getting the truth. That's what I'm convinced in. That's what Detective Wallace is convinced in. But we're convinced in other aspects because evidence, you know, evidence is a convincing factor. Evidence doesn't lie. Forensic sciences don't lie. But the truth Abraham, is right out there at the property. Abraham lived Hello? that kind of lifestyle. He was yes, very, very. Yes. Giving no. lifestyle. Everything he yes, gave away eleven million dollars in two years' time. Eleven million. So look at all of those other people. I have no. I have. Uh, look, look, listen. I, you know, I have no doubt that Abraham Shakespeare gave out money. I, I've talked to a lot of people in the past week. I've talked to almost as many people as Polk County has interviewed and talked during the course of their two-month investigation that we've had to go out and re-solidify statements with. I've been pretty much working around the clock this week on this, now that it's developed to the point it has on your property. Hence, we're sitting here and you're dealing with two agencies and say, well, hang on. And I have no doubt that Abraham Shakespeare was generous with his money. I mean, some may call it foolish, some may call it extravagant, some may call it just out of the goodness of his heart. I didn't know the man, so I can't make that type of opinion, but I do know that he gave his money away, basically. That's pretty admirable, giving away all that kind of money. Whether or not it was under false auspices of maybe somebody, you know, telling them to do this or that with it, or, you know, he himself not being very knowledgeable or, um, you know, having the ability to understand what he was doing with that amount of money, I don't know. That's neither here nor there. Point is, yeah, a lot of people benefited from, from his winnings, from, the, from that money. That, you know, if that was his choice, that was his choice. But from what I've seen, from a lot of that money may not have been his choice. And right now, I'm not worried about the money. Hang on. Bank. I'm not worried about the money thing right now. I'm worried about the fact that a human being was killed in my county but and buried in my county. Right, but That's what I'm worried about. The motive for me to kill him over money. I never so said anything about that. motive with money. I never said anything about that. Then why would I want the man dead? Explain to me why I would that's want that man that's, dead. That's what we like to Hang on a second. Listen to me. You have got to realize the angle that we are coming from. I know. With no, it no, looks horrible. I, don't, I, don't, I, I would do the same thing. Don't say nothing. Just listen to me for a minute, okay? 
you have to realize that we're looking at this from the outside and we are solving a crime, okay? Everything here points to you, okay? So if you're going to tell us a story, if you're going to tell us what's going on, I'm going to point out to you why it's either true or not true, okay? I'm looking at it as a juror. I'm looking at it as a prosecutor, as, a, as, a, as I'm the judge sitting here, okay? And if you start telling me something that I know is not true, I'm going to tell you, no, that's not true. That's not going to fly in court. That's bullshit. I have to call bullshit when I see bullshit. You understand that, okay? I'm tired of having to call bullshit with you because I've had to call bullshit with you every single time I've talked to you, okay? I'm telling you right now, all right, as the way things stand right this second, there's two people that I legitimately said, tell you I can put in jail for this crime, okay? That is you, and that is your ex-husband, James, James Moore, okay? That is the only two at this point, okay? Do I honestly believe, do I, do I think there's a chance James Moore didn't know anything? Yes, I do think there's a chance. That's going to take you telling us the truth. And I told Hold on. Listen to me. Okay, do you understand you sitting there and telling me he's not involved and I'll sign a piece of paper? That doesn't mean shit to me because probably at least a hundred times of the stories you've told me, I have had to throw the bullshit flag out every single time. Every time. Okay, so your word is absolutely nothing. You signing a piece of paper saying you swear to God has about as much value to me as a piece of shit on the ground right now. Your word in a court of law is absolutely not worth anything. Do you understand this? Okay? The only thing that's worth anything is the truth, because the truth can be proven. Okay? And we have the ability to prove it. And we'll know if you're being truthful. End of story. Okay? Now, if you, like I told you, like I told you, we know you were involved. You are not a victim. You are involved. Plain and simple, okay? Let's get past the convoluted bullshit stories about how you were there. Give me a reason why I'd want the man dead. I already gave it to you. Money is not the reason. Yes, it is a big reason, and there's no way you can explain it away other than you say, the goodness of my heart, I didn't do it. He wanted it that way. That doesn't fly. So that does not fly. Just listen to me. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fly, okay? I'm telling you from the outside, this isn't, hang on, this isn't Dave Wallace, the person that you think wants to execute you for the rest of your life. This is a person sitting here thinking with a logical mind, okay, here, why would this lady, who has gained from Abraham Shakespeare being dead? And he's a person thinking like a juror. Like a juror, okay? There's only one person here, listen to me, don't come up with another line yet, okay? There's only one person who has benefited, benefited from the death of Abraham Shakespeare. That is the D.D. Moore. How about Poppy? Oh, and a million dollars. He has, not, he has not benefited anything. He owes the man a million dollars. Exactly. And you know what, D.D.? That's great that you can say that. But guess what? There's no paperwork anywhere about that. Yeah. Hang on. Listen to me. See, there's no paperwork saying that he owes a million dollars. That it's signed by him or Abraham Shakespeare anywhere. Okay? Now, I go to Poppy to interview him very early in this investigation. Do you know what Poppy tells me? Hey, look, I borrowed a million dollars from the man. I still owe him something like $700,000. If I see him, I will pay him $700,000. There's no proof anywhere other than what he told me. And he even calls me back the next day. He goes, Detective Wallace, can you come to my store? Yes, I can. He hands me copies of the certified cashier's checks. Hey, here's the, hundred, here's the million dollars that he lent me, okay? So he has nothing to gain at all. At all, okay? So it's not what about Poppy, okay? It's not what about Cedric, okay? We've thrown Cedric out because Cedric's got the audio tapes. You were going to go there, but you can't. No, I Listen wasn't. to me. Listen to me. You were going to go there. No, I Dee -dee. wasn't. Dee -dee. I was not going to go to Cedric. I've already talked to Cedric. Cedric said he had nothing to do with it. I recently Dee -dee. talked. Dee Dee, you have talked. You don't realize. You think you go around. You think all these people like you, and they believe you, and they're your friends, Okay. Let me tell you what, all these black guys that you're dealing with, oh, they're your friends while, they're, while you're standing there, while you're paying them money and while you're doing things for them, but the minute the police come around, guess what, they, what their line is? Fuck that white bitch. I ain't going down for her. Let me tell you exactly what happened. Here's what happened. And that's verbatim. That's right out of their mouths. 
That is exactly what happens every single time. You think all these people are going to lie to you because while you're standing there and you're giving them money to do this and that, they're going to do it. But when the rubber hits the road, honey, it don't happen. Okay? They tell the truth. And guess what? I can believe them because guess what? It pans out every single time. From the audio recordings to handing me the freaking um, the, the affidavit you wanted, et cetera, to sign, to all this stuff. It it always, that's what he told me he had seen Abraham. He told Dee Dee, me that. No. no. No, Dee Dee, and it's not going to fly. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to help you here. You don't realize it, but I'm trying to help you. And I didn't end up making it Okay. Sign. No, because he wouldn't sign it. What do you mean making him sign it? Because he wouldn't. Dee Dee, in the last so hour and time. ten minutes that we've been sitting here talking mm -hmm. to you, you know, I picked up on some physical cues, and they're just quite interesting because, I, I mean, I know all these concocted stories. I've watched your interview from Monday Night with Detective Carter. Or Clark. I mean, not Clark, they're, I'm sorry. They're videotaped over there? They might be. I thought that was against the law without me knowing. It's not against the law. We are law enforcement. Oh, okay. Okay? Okay. But I've, picked, I, I've noticed something. It's just interesting. It's, it's when you start to kind of merge into this new concocted story or, or another rabbit hole as I like to refer to. You have just this, you know, discerned look on your on your face and your eyes. I mean it's just, just this serious look. And then when the truth hits out of Detective Wallace's mouth from his long term investigation and he's putting to you poignant facts that are true and you know they're true your eyes just shut and your wheels are just turning I'm in just your head and you're to thinking to yourself and you're saying, damn it, if he ain't right. No. Yes, yes. I'm thinking that, that the money stuff he talked about, that Cedric said he would not lie in court. I'm sure he showed, you've got that on audio, that Cedric said he would not lie in court, that I did not take any of that money, that Abraham went into those banks. He willingly did that himself. He didn't want Tori to have a dime. He he did that because he wanted to keep her from having anything. He didn't care about that. He shopped at the dollar store. He still shopped at the No, yeah. you want the money to be the motive, and that's not. No, what I'm telling you is the money is the motive. The money, Dee Dee, listen to me. When you put it in front of a jury, the jury is going to And then the jury will like convict me, and you will convict an innocent person. No, we won't. And then, you know what? Life it will not exist that I know of because I thought that we lived in society that people Don't wanted the truth. Don't start crap, okay? The truth is you had something to do with it and now it's no, time for you to tell I the didn't. truth about what happened. I'm telling you the no, truth and not. you don't want to listen. No. You don't care. No, you don't. You don't want the truth. Dee. You want your side. Dee. You want your drama. Dee. You want your belief. No, you we want, want drama. Do you, think we, do you think we like working around the clock all week, being away? From our own personal lives. Do you think I like digging up a dead black man from April? Do you think I enjoyed it last night? No, when I had to he smell, does not do. Do you think I enjoyed it last night when I had to smell his rotting carcass? Do you really think I enjoyed it? Do you think any human being deserves <laughs> to be put in a shallow grave on and property? That's why and I you have concrete it's poured over? You. It's not right. He's not a piece of trash. He doesn't belong there. It wasn't right. You don't Then do why that. did they put him there? I didn't put him there. You, Dee Dee, you knew exactly where he was because, because, hang on a minute, because you put the piece of metal right over. Exactly. It was exactly where, because you put it right Ronald exactly told where. me where it was and how he got it there. No, 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 no. Hang no, on. I put it. Don't you have that on for recording? Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I almost forgot one thing. What? There was another time that Greg met you. And I watched. And you got he went to he went to Radio Shack again. And this time, Greg bought three new Boost Mobile phones. One of them was for you. One of them was for Greg. And I'm not sure who the other one was for. Okay. Well, guess what that story was. Okay, and I've got it all on audio. This is the phone. You're going to use this phone, and you're going to be Ronald. You're going to be Ronald. You're going to call me several times. And then we're going to throw that into a lake. And I'm going to tell them that Ronald called me on that phone. I've got it on audio. I forgot to tell you about that one. You're going to be... 
Greg, you're going to be Ronald. And hey, if we get caught, we're going to tell them that Ronald did this. That's on audio, too. It's interesting how Ronald is this fictitious drug dealer, robber kind of guy. Because I couldn't get a hold of him like that. He comes when he wants to. No, but hold on a minute. Hold on. Okay, he comes when he wants to. But guess what? Your other story to me, and boy, it's right here on my text messages from you, was that in between the time that you talked to Greg on Monday morning, you were able to contact Ronald. And Ronald told you right where that body was at. Really? No, Ronald doesn't. But you can't get a hold of Ronald. But you got a hold of Ronald then. Come on. It's over. It's right done. under that piece of metal that you placed. It's done. No, so you didn't get a hold of Ronald. No, I told him he was supposed to get a hold of me and he got a hold of me. Oh, oh, by luck of God, he got a hold of you at that time. I didn't. In know between the, the two first times. time, he didn't. Because when Greg asked me the first time in audio, you should be able to hear I haven't talked to him. You should be able to hear that on audio that I did not talk to Ronald. I didn't know where it was. And he told, I told him I had to meet him back later to make sure. There's no Ronald. You didn't talk okay. to a Ronald. Okay. Uh, this is the That's, same Ronald that you yeah. would come up behind your house and get money from your thing? Is that the right the one? That's another story you told. Ronald, the tall black guy. Remember you told David Clark that he was in the white car. You were going to blame it on the, on the undercover officer before you found out he was an undercover officer. Come on. Dee, I'm trying to help you. I really, really am. Okay? I'm trying to help you. Actually, I don't, I'm trying to help RJ. I don't want R.J. to lose his mother and his father. He can't lose his father. His father well, he's about to. Do anything. He's about uh, to. Have you not been hearing what we've been telling you for the last hour and 20 minutes in here? But I'm telling you the truth about the guy being there, and you don't You haven't told me the truth about anything yet. Nothing that we can prove. Nothing Ronald, that can be Ronald proven does not exist. That is a, he, that's a ghost. That's a figment. That's a concocted individual okay, a guy to solidify a guy. your entire plot. Okay. You made up Ronald. You know you did. You made up Ronald, okay? One of the other things you had Greg do was call me. Before I knew who Greg was, Greg called me. And Greg told me, hey, I saw him down in Miami. Hang on. No, no, no. Not because. Don't be because. Because when every time you say but or because, it's followed by a lie, okay? You had him call me. I saw, hey, man, you can call me B. I saw Abraham down in Miami at a club. His wallet fell out in front of me, and I saw his ID. Okay? Unbelievable. Then you tell Clark about another, uh, about how this Ronald, Ronald followed you to your house one day. He didn't know how to get a hold of you, so he, he should showed up at your house, and he talked to you. Then you changed it with Greg, and you told Greg that you were pumping gas at the BP when this Ronald came up to you at the BP. Out of everybody in the world he could have ran into, he ran into you at the BP. Ronald. Then you want Greg to be Ronald. And then you want Ronald to be here. And then it's not him. Because Hold on. No, no, no. Stop. Wasn't Hold on. Around. Stop it. Then it's Fairy Gay. But no, it's not Fairy Gay. It's Shirky Sean. Or that, Squeaky that Sean. That Fairy Gay is an interesting name. And then the late, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, Shanky Sean or something. Did you look up Fairy Gay? Did you look up Fairy Gay? We've looked into things. Okay, well. I'm not going to confirm it. or deny anything. Did you okay? look up Fairy Gay? I'm not going to answer that right now because I want Detective Wallace to continue explaining away this concoction. Every hint. different name. It's all bogus. What What was Fairy Gay? Was it, He was in prison. Fairy Gay is somebody is looked it, up on the computer. Is, it's not that hard. <gasps> it's not that hard to, to put names That's together. Mr. Land. Oh, we've, we've talked to Mr. Land. Guess what? Mr. Land, every time you went and met him, he called me, too. He wasn't on your side, either, Dee Dee. He was feeding me information, too. Like what? I didn't do anything. Um, I'm trying to sell the house for $50,000. I want to sell it. You're, he was going to hook you up with the old man until he talked to me, and I said, no, that's not going to happen. So that deal fell through, how you're trying to get rid of all these properties. That always fell through. Why did it fall through? Because of me. Every single time. Okay? Come on, Dee Dee. Game over. I'm good at the game. Okay? I've been playing the game a lot longer than you. A lot longer than you. It's just done.
okay? Mr. Land, talk to him numerous times. Talk to him on a daily basis. Oh, but I even talked to him today. Okay, all the names, you know. You talked to Mr. Land today about what? I didn't talk to him. You I talk to him about. every day. You don't even know what I talk to people about. I'm not going to tell you what I talk to people about. Okay? This isn't me who's looking at the rest of my life in prison. This is you don't need to be concerned what the details of the conversations are with these individuals. I don't Just know the rest of my life in prison because I don't see a jury thinking that I would take a gun and shoot a man. And I don't see the ballistics showing that I'm the exact height of being able to angle the gun at a certain whatever and shoot that man. Okay, I'll go to that house you and you can prove that Do you think a height me. ballistics is, is going to Let's set see. you free? What oh, if he's on. sitting down? What if he's standing up? up? What if he's laying on the ground? Sitting what down, whatever. Sitting. The height is not going to be angled where it is. What if you're sitting shooter. down? That's what you're. What saying. if you're standing? You know, come on, Dee. Where would I be sitting? You, where would I be Dee. sitting down on the other side? Dee, Dee are you going to put your life, risk your life on some stupid CSI stuff that you mm -hmm. might have seen? Okay. How about when the jury has... No, I know in my heart there's God up above, and God knows I didn't shoot him. Okay. Then who did? Give me a realistic one this time. I a realistic you. one. The only reason I've been making this one is because I told you to begin with, I didn't know his name, his real name. I told you Ronald was his made-up name, probably. I wasn't <laughs> sure of his real name. Probably, no. Now, what's his real name, then? I don't know. You never bothered giving me a book where you looked through it to see if I could identify the guy. You never did a anything book. like Dee. that. A I book. asked you to give me a phone number the guy called you from. You could never do that. The guy didn't call me. That guy did not call me. When Ronald called me, it was unknown. Oh. But that guy never called me. The guy that shot him did never call me. After that night, I never seen you never that guy again. never gave me Ronald's number, either. I bet you would have. It would have been the phone that Greg had that would have ended up in the lake. Mm -hmm. The boost. Because we had already talked about that on you talked yeah. about that on the audio. But the guy that shot him, I do not know him. I have okay. never so seen him after that that night. The only time I've seen him, and after that night, I've never seen him again. Okay, well, what about all the money you paid him? That's why he kept you alive. He had a guy that I called Ronald come by and pick it up. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay, so the jury's going to buy all of that. No, they're, they're not. not. I'm going to jail for something I didn't do. And so is James Moore. Why is James going? I told he you. He dug a hole. He You're dug trying a hole. to he threaten me hole. with that because that is not fair. That's he did gonna not dig that That's hole. That's what's going to happen. He did not I'm not dig threatening you with anything. anything. That's what's going to happen. Wait, that is not that's fair. That's not going to happen. Why? What do, do I have to do to make that? So you want me to admit to a crime I didn't do? I want you to tell the truth. You know, you want me to tell the truth. I want you to tell the truth. A guy come in and shot him, took everything that we had in the safe for cash, and left with it. And left you alive? Yes. To give money to somebody who you don't know. Right? This is your story. Let's get it straight. So this guy kills Abraham Shakespeare, leaves you alive for you to give him five or ten thousand dollars here or there to another guy that Look you at don't my know. Bank statement. To another guy that you don't oh, know. We have looked at your bank statement. Um so so another guy that you don't know, and I guess that's the guy that you'd put the money on the back porch and then the guy would just sneak up in the middle of the night and take the five or ten thousand dollars and leave? Is that is that the story that we're gonna go with? I mean, really, I, I, I've got children's books that are written better than that. Yeah. And, Ron, you know, James, you're, you're saying he, he didn't. He didn't. Now you're saying he didn't dig the hole. The man came over and met with us today and walked over as I instructed, as I did, you know, uh, acted out for you to the very tree that is the most, most south, closest to that two-story structure and said, oh, it's about I'm right here. he didn't know. It's about that right here. And Doug is straight the only this truth way. that might be in any right. of your story, the only truth that might be in any of your story, is that there was somebody else involved, and for some reason you won't tell us who that person is, because you know, because you know, and you know they'll implicate you right in the middle of it. That's right. And I'm telling you right now, if you have any bit of, of heart and soul in you that loves your son, you're going to come off of the truth right now. And you're going to spare your son seeing his mother only, and his father go to jail. And not only for your son, look at me a minute, not only for your son, but you're sitting here shedding these crocodile tears over the fact that you had a human being, Abraham Shakespeare, buried on your property, and that he didn't deserve that. Did. So this, this crying that you're doing now, I don't even know if I can believe that or not. He didn't. He can. The man was a human being and he put was. in a freaking shallow grave he to rot. He didn't deserve that. He didn't. Then Dee. tell us the truth, Dee Dee. Dee Dee, you sat there with Clark the other night, and you know what you told him? And you know what's going to play right in front of the jury? 
You know what? If I'm right in front of the jury, I'll tell you the truth. Can I keep my stuff, my house, and my cars, and everything else that I stole from Abraham? I didn't steal it Jesus from Abraham. Well, whatever you call it. I didn't steal call it. Call it whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. But the quote was, There's if I no tell you... That was let me that. take. Let me, let's, let's do the let's quote itself. It. Let's rephrase it. We'll drop off the stole part. I'll tell you the truth if I can keep my stuff. Do you know how that's going to play with the jury? Oh, no, the money's not the motive. Can I keep my stuff? It wasn't like that. I, you know, I, I, know. I, was gonna I have an everything. innocent man buried on my property rotting. Can I keep my stuff, I by did, the way? No, oh, I'm I, saying that I did not do it. And he's saying I'm going to lose everything. Why should I lose everything when I didn't kill the man? Can I, I keep did my not stuff? kill that man. I'll tell you the truth. Can I keep my stuff? But no, the money's not the motive. But no, there's a guy that I don't know his name that I call this guy Ronald that I was going to pay another guy to be Ronald. And then he up and takes money off the back porch. Uh, Dee Dee, come on. Come on. This isn't the world we live in. You know it. There's the, nobody lives in that world. Nobody. And what back porch are you referring to? Have you ever read the book? Hang, hang, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. What back porch are you, are you referring to a few minutes ago when you said whatever comes up and, and gets money off the back porch? It, it didn't come up a lot. It was like only a couple well, what, what, of what, what house are you referring to? The what one in Red Hawk. Okay. You mean the one where your son was safe in the room next door next to a killer that was coming up and it getting money? It wasn't that killer that was coming up. Oh, no, it was his associate. Oh, God, we can trust him. Yeah, never, never mind the actual <laughs> worry about man. He was with him. But he's shady little side worry about that. He's just going to come up and take payments and stuff. We won't worry about that Don't guy. Don't stay in the house with me. RJ, you can have that nice house outside. Maybe.